This is Super Science Smorgasbord Lesson 1, the Crayon Rock Cycle Activity. Our activity learning objectives are that students will be able to observe and describe the rock cycle, explain how erosion and weathering start the rock cycle, and explain that pressure and heat are the key factors in the transformation from one rock type to another. Hi, I'm Josh Morris with Science Matters, and welcome to Super Science Smorgasbord, Lesson 1, all about rocks and fossils. Throughout this lesson, the students will experiment like they're geologists with the rocks and paleontologists as we experiment with fossils. By the time we're finished today, students should know about the rock cycle, different types of rocks from the rock cycle, and what, what is a fossil, and what does a fossil tell us about the geologic time period. For this hands-on activity, you will need some aluminum foil, a knife, an assortment of crayons, a plastic bowl, a clothespin, a candle with a ball of clay in order for the candle to stand on the table, a box of matches, and a hammer. In order to prep for this activity, you will have six assorted colored crayons in your class kit. You will need to peel the label off of the crayon in order to expose the crayon itself. You will then take a knife and shave little pieces of the crayon down into one of your plastic bowls from your general supply kit. You're packed with six crayons, two per group, so you'll group the kids into groups of four, so when we're finished, we have three groups of four. Each group will then have two different colors of crayons to mimic the sediment of rocks that will start the rock cycle. So we'll continue to shave our crayon. We can also cut little pieces that are just a little bit bigger in order to mimic different pieces of sediment as they form together to make rocks. Once we've shaved our crayons into the bowl, we're ready to do the experiment and the activity with the students. We'll take those shavings and dump those onto a piece of aluminum foil. Now these are our rock sediments, and over time, through weathering and erosion, rocks break down. We get small pieces that, through the movement of water, air, wind, and gravity, can eventually settle in one place, and those sediments can then start to form sedimentary rocks, our first step in the rock cycle. In order to do this investigation and this experiment, the students will actually take their hands and the rocks, our crayons, and start to squish them together, because the whole point of the rock cycle is heat and pressure. The more heat and pressure we add, the more rocks that we can make. The students will continue to squish our sediment together, applying pressure, just a little bit of heat from their hands, in order to make a sedimentary rock. They'll notice that it's not so easy to get all those pieces together. They'll also notice that some of the bigger pieces don't squish together quite as well as the small pieces or the really thin strips that we slice off of the crayon. And that's exactly the way it works. It's not that all sediment goes together instantly to make rocks. Rocks are formed over thousands of years and this takes a very long time. So students notice that sedimentary rocks are very grainy. They're easy to break apart like sandstone. It falls apart very easily because not much heat and pressure went to actually make the rock and hold everything together. Once the students investigate the first step in our rock cycle, the sedimentary rocks, they will then go on to metamorphic rocks. And in order to do this, we need to apply even more heat and more pressure. So to do that, we're going to fold our aluminum foil into a pouch around all of our sediment, our pieces of crayons. The more layers of foil we can get between the hammer we're going to use in just a second and the crayons, the less likely we are to actually rip the aluminum foil. And now the students will bring this to the teacher. The teacher will use the hammer provided in their teacher kit to actually apply heat and pressure to our crayon shavings. Now you need to make sure that you do this on a very solid surface, and you do need to apply quite a bit of pressure with the hammer. Not enough to rip the aluminum foil, but you do need to hit it fairly hard. So after we hit it quite a few times, it takes a good about 30 seconds to a minute. Then we can open it up. And now you can see we've made our metamorphic rock. We've taken those rock sediments, applied more heat and pressure. We've actually put them together to make our metamorphic rock. So now we've gone through the sedimentary phase of the rock cycle, the metamorphic phase of the rock cycle, and now to get to an igneous rock, our third stop in the rock cycle, we have to add even more heat and pressure. So once again, we'll fold our pouch back together, holding our new crayon rock inside. And to add the heat this time, we're gonna use a candle. In your teacher kit, you're supplied with a ball of clay, a couple of candles, and a book of matches. The students will hand you their pouch. You can clip it with a clothespin and now hold it 
over the candle flame. And this mimics adding even more heat and pressure as we go from a metamorphic rock into an igneous rock in our rock cycle. Each pouch should probably be held over the candle for about a minute, enough time to start to heat up the, the crown wax, start to melt it just a little bit to mimic that metamorphic rock gaining heat and energy in order to turn into, a set of, into an igneous rock. This is kind of like making a s'more. If you have a class of older students and you have two candles, I think the students are more than capable of holding this over the candle flame. If you have mainly a class of younger students, then again, you have two candles, many clothespins, and the teacher can do two at one time as they heat these up and apply heat and pressure to turn the student's metamorphic rock into an igneous rock. And once we've applied enough heat and pressure, we will lay this on the table and allow it to cool for just a second. We can then open up our pouch. And sure enough, we can see down inside that some of our sediment has actually started to heat until it melts. We're actually turning some of this solid into a liquid, which is exactly what happens when igneous rocks are formed in the very, very hot molten core of the earth. So now we'll have to allow this to cool. And this cooling process will mimic what's called an extrusive igneous rock. Igneous rocks like lava rock or pumice that form on the outside of the earth. They will cool, they'll bubble, they'll mix together, and all of a sudden we've gone from just sediment to sedimentary rocks to metamorphic rocks. And now we've started to make our igneous rocks, which once they cool, we'll have finished our third step in the rock cycle. All in a little less than 10 minutes. Now in the real world, the rock cycle takes maybe a thousand years at the least, anywhere between 20,000 years on at the most. Again, in the geologic time scale, we're mimicking something very quickly that takes thousands and thousands of years.